Good morning, Lancers, and welcome to your first flex time of second semester. As I explained on GTV earlier this week, um, this is a flex time that's being dedicated as a homeroom or a grade level meeting type um, approach so that we can discuss some of the important things for second semester. And to do that, I want to share a little experience I had with one of my sons while hiking. Um, I enjoy hiking. I take my family as often as we get up into the hills or the mountains and, and walk and walk and walk. Um, not always do my kids like it as much as I do. And because of that, sometimes I encourage them by bringing things that will help them pass the time. Once I was with um, my son who's now a freshman at his high school, we were up hiking. I actually had my AirPods with me and we had, I think it was Harry Potter or some other audio book on my iPhone. To help him pass the time, I said, hey, let's listen to this book. Um, I've got two AirPods, I'll put one in my ear and you put the other one in your ear and we'll both get to hear the same book at the same time. With very few other options in front of him, that seemed to do the trick. And he said, all right, let's listen to your book. And we hiked and hiked and hiked and passed the time quite a bit with the audiobook of Harry Potter playing in our ears. Now what I found fascinating about the whole thing was um, Bluetooth AirPods have to have proximity to work. And it usually is not a big deal because you have an AirPod that's only a head away from each other and a phone in your pocket, so about a meter apart. But when you're trying to share them with somebody else, it can be one, two, three, 10, 20 meters apart, depending how well or fast you're hiking. Um, this became evident to me as we were hiking and my son started to drag and he'd get further and further behind. When he'd get too far back, he couldn't hear the book anymore because it was disconnecting from the Bluetooth on my phone. And then he'd speed up and catch up a little bit. Um, it happened half a dozen times where we'd be hiking, he'd fall too far behind and eventually the connection to my phone would disconnect. He'd realize he was falling too far behind and he'd speed to catch up. Um, we chuckled about it a lot and I've since thought there's a lot of applicability to that story to other things and specifically to some of the things I want to talk about today in our homeroom meeting. Um, there is a lot that you're trying to keep up to pace on in high school. Um, we talked about this being the start of second semester, almost a little mini school year in of itself. For some of you, this is your last semester in high school. For some of you, this is your second semester in high school. But no matter where you are on that hike, on that journey, it is really wise or advisable to be checking, are you on pace? Are you on schedule? Are you keeping up with what you, you need to be? Now there's things that help that along the way. There's homework assignments from teachers. There's assessments from teachers. There's weekly mini progress reports with your grades in it or your messages that you wrote or your teachers wrote. There's um, every quarter report cards. Um, but all of that is feedback to you, input or data to you to let you know, are you, are you keeping up? Are you on track? Can you still hear the audiobook in your, your Bluetooth AirPod as you're going? Um, some of the others that we want to talk about are how are you doing actually with your credits or the um, academic credits or even citizenship credits that you need to be able to eventually walk at graduation. Now, if you're a senior and you're going into your last semester of high school, that is very, very evident to you. You know how critical that is and you know how short your timetable is to be ready for that. If you're a freshman, that might seem like a distant life that is so far away you can't even wrap your brain around it. Um, I know my seniors could tell you that it goes fast. From the time that you're a second semester freshman to a second semester senior goes by in a blink. So you don't want to put off checking to see, am I on track? Am I keeping up? Until it's too late because it's really hard to dig yourself out of a hole at that point. So what I'd like to spend some of our, our homeroom time on today is to go over three, count them three, new things that will be present in your weekly mini progress report email. Now your mini progress report email you should be pretty used to, but I acknowledge some of you might not be. It's really designed for your parents. However, nobody should be more in the loop on your education and your progress than you. So yes, we send it to your parents, but we copy you on it every single week. Um, for those who have never seen that email, please know this is a life skill you've got to get on top of. You've got to be able to have an email account that you check regularly. 
For you, it's pretty easy because the email account's already built. For Granite School District students, it's always your student ID number at graniteschools.org. Um, you can actually access your email on your Chromebook. Right down at the bottom of the screen is the little mail app icon. It's got an M on it. And when you click on that, you will see a mini progress report every single weekend that is authored by you when you write your student message to your parents, your teachers, and a little message from the administration as well. It also includes um, your self-reported grades, your um, report on how you're doing with your graduate of granite characteristics. All of that is included every single week on your mini progress report. Other things you may not have noticed way down at the bottom, we also include your cumulative GPA and your cumulative CPA is on there every single week. Also um, absences and tardies. All of that is included and that's why every one of these e emails are individualized. They all go out and they're, they're all different because every student has a different set of teachers with different grades, different absences and tardies, different cumulative GPA and CPA. So every single one of these emails is different. They're personalized to you and to your parents. Now, starting second semester, we are gonna see a few new things on here. Um, the first one I wanna talk about is what's gonna be called your citizenship super score. Let me explain what that is a little bit. Um, you are familiar with your citizenship CPA. That comes from the characteristics of the graduate of Granite. There's five of them. We talk about them regularly. Every single Thursday, you are taking some time to actually self-evaluate how you're doing on those five characteristics across your different classes and to be able to score yourself. Those become your citizenship point average, your CPA. You have to have a 2.0, a 2.0 CPA to walk at graduation, to get to participate in the graduation ceremony, you have to have a 2.0. Now again, that might seem like a very different thing for my seniors as it does for my freshmen. <laughs> seniors know that that opportunity to graduate and, and have that great experience with your peers and your teachers is only a few months away. For our freshmen, it's a few years away. But either way, it's coming and you want to make sure you're keeping up and staying on track to be able to participate in that great, great event. You have to have a 2.0. Now with the new CPA, just so my freshmen are aware, that standard is actually going to be a 3.0. But we'll talk about that as we get closer and closer to it. Right now, everybody, freshmen included, I want you to be aware of the 2.0 target that is what the uniform across all eight high schools and Grant School District is expecting. Um, at Granger and many of the other high schools, we also use that number as a goal for other extracurricular activities, um, participation in athletics, clubs, and school dances. All of those are meant to keep us along the way, making sure we're keeping up so that we can walk at graduation by having that 2.0 CPA. So on your email, you have had a cumulative CPA every week. Starting next week, you are going to see a cumulative CPA super score. You'll still see the normal cumulative CPA, but right next to it will be a super score as well. Now, the super score is your CPA plus all of the additional hours of credit recovery, CPA credit recovery, you have made added in. Let me give you an example. You might have a cumulative CPA of a 1.7. That means you're not yet eligible to walk at graduation or participate in those other extracurricular activities but you can actually regain some of that credit by going to your flex time every Friday, going to after school credit recovery, participating in um, other service projects, including um, some credit recovery that's coordinated through Mr. Jackson, and those are done on Saturday schools. All of those things on a weekly basis get recorded. And when they're recorded, they will now automatically update every single week in your super score for your CPA. So I want you to watch for that on your email to be able to zero in and see what was your not only cumulative CPA, but your CPA super score. If you have a 1.7 like the example I just gave, and you have a certain number of hours that you've already done through flex time and through credit recovery or service projects, you're gonna have the 1.7 plus. It might all of a sudden now be a 1.8 nine. And just to give you an idea of how those hours add up, we do give you a full hour 
of CPA credit recovery for every single flex time Friday, every single one, which is pretty generous because it's only 34 minutes long, but we give you the full hour for being present for that. When you go to Mr. Bernard's um, classroom after school and you do your credit recovery there and get checked in, that also will award you for however many hours you're, you're working in that setting, CPA credit recovery. All of those hours get tracked and every one hour is more or less equal to about one one hundredth of a point in your CPA. So if you're at a 1.9, let's say a 1.91 and you do two, credit, um, two hours of credit recovery, that's gonna take you from a 1.91 to a 1.93. Two more is 1.95, two more is 1.97. You can see how you're gonna close that gap to make sure you're above a 2.0. Now, if you're already above a 2.0, you might be thinking, well, I don't want to worry about that. I don't need to worry about that. It's hard to tell what your future will hold. <laughs> so I would encourage you, I'd invite you to prepare for a rainy day now. We still award you that credit recovery as part of your super score. On the front end, even if you're above a 2.0, let's say right now your cumulative CPA is a 2.4, you're going to notice that your cumulative CPA super score might be a 2.7. That way, if you do get some lower marks later on that are pulling your CPA down lower, you've already got some of the extra um, credit recovery hours built in from flex time, from credit recovery, from service projects, from club work, from all those different um, avenues, you would already have those hours built in. So that's item number one on your mini progress report. You need to look for that. You're gonna see your cumulative CPA, and you're going to see your cumulus CPA super score. The super score is going to determine your eligibility to walk at graduation and your eligibility to participate in other extracurricular activities. All right, that's number one. And you are going to get a chance during your homeroom time to get to check on these things. Number two is this. That's our citizenship credit. Ever more important is our academic credit. Um, you will actually be handed out during this time as soon as we're concluding this a worksheet to get to do a self-reflection on how are you doing on your credit so far. Now this worksheet shows to be able to earn a high school diploma, you need to earn 27 credits. And not just any 27 credits, 27 credits across specific categories. For example, you need four credits to come from your English language arts. And the worksheet's gonna show you on each of these how well you're doing. This is your own self-reflection. Of course, you can use your Chromebook and look up your old grades to be able to find out how you did. But on this document, you need to self-reflect and go through the time you have been in high school and to be able to check the boxes to say, have you earned the credit or not? You earn the credit for each quarter you have a passing grade in that class. If you have a failing grade, an F, that does mean that you did not get the credit for that quarter of that class. And you are in need of credit recovery to be able to recapture that and get yourself back on track. This is a little bit of a signal saying, hey, you're falling too, back, too far behind and the AirPods not keeping up with the iPhone and we can't, you can't hear the, the audiobook. So this is meant to be a moment to say, hey, we need to be aware right now you're, you're falling back and we need you to catch up and you've got to take the initiative for that. So your assignment during this next block of time is to be able to go through and actually fill out on a self-reflection how you're doing based on your knowledge of how many semesters or quarters you've been um, in high school, how many credits you have earned on that path to your 27 credits for your high school diploma. Now, in your mini progress report, I said there'd be three new things. The second one is Every single week, we will list on there the credits our computer is showing. So yes, this is self-reflection where you're writing down what you remember, but check your mini progress report every week to see, does my mini progress report say the same number of credits towards my high school diploma as I am thinking? And if not, why? And can you figure it out and make sure you get the credits that you, you deserve or have earned? Now, the third item that will be on your mini progress report you have had the opportunity to do the growth measure assessment probably up to two times so far this year. It doesn't matter terribly where your reading comprehension level is at, but that is a goal that will enhance everything you're doing at school. If you can continue to improve your reading fluency and reading comprehension, it helps in your math class, in your science class, in your social studies class, in every one of your classes. 
um, we see a huge correlation between those who become highly fluent, highly um, efficient in comprehending what they read, and those who get great grades and credits and keep on track to graduation. So in your mini progress report, you will now see every single week the goal you are shooting for for the end of this school year of what score you should be aiming to hit on your growth measure. It's gonna be different for everybody because it's based on where you've been. And it's a, a growth goal based on where you've been, a reasonable amount of improvement from there. Now, we'll have more information coming from our literacy committee in the upcoming weeks, but that is something that we want you aware of, watching every week on your mini progress report and knowing that um, we're excited to incentivize and celebrate each student who can hit their end of year goal. And like I said, we'll have more information on that coming. But those are the three things that will be in your mini progress report coming up. You'll have a CPA, cumulative CPA, super score. You're gonna have um, your credits listed every single week of how many credits you have earned um, so far in high school that we have on our record. And what is your growth measure goal for the end of the year to show reasonable improvement throughout this school year. Now, when you conclude this video here, we do want you to be able to pull out those documents and be able to review that self-reflection of your credits. Um, teachers, this is a great time to be able to connect with your homeroom students, be able to have a little bit of a sense of how are they doing on, on any one of those three, but specifically the credits is what you'll have in front of you as you can review with your, your students right now. Um, and we'll take this time in this first homeroom meeting to be able to build upon that. The other items that will be reviewed here are just some of the reminders of our positive behavior and intervention support that will um, not be anything new, but just reminders as we go into our second semester. Thank you, Lancers. At Granger High School, we want to express our own individuality and style without disrupting the learning environment of our school. For this reason, the students, teachers, and parents of our community have agreed to the following dress standard. Tops must have straps that go over the shoulders and tops must cover the area from the armpits to the belly button. Bottoms must cover all skin from the waist to the middle of the thigh. Hats, beanies, and hoods may be worn in the building so long as eyes and ears are still visible. Gang-related clothing, clothing that is disrespectful towards other or clothing that depicts violence, drugs, or sexually explicit content must not be worn at school. Students not following the dress standard will need to change into clothes that meet the standard by borrowing clothes from the front office, by calling home for a change of clothes, or by changing into other clothes that the student might have that meets the dress standard. We believe our differences make us stronger, our similarities make us one. We are family. We are Granger! Here at Granger High School, we believe that technology can be a powerful tool in the classroom. However, research has also shown that it can be a big distraction to our learning in the classroom as well. We plan to provide you with the technology that you will need to be successful in your classes. Each student is assigned a Chromebook that they can use to access all things that they will need to for learning purposes. What we are asking is that all of your personal electronic devices, things such as cell phones, headphones, smartwatches, tablets, and other personal electronics are not used within the classroom unless you have direct permission from your teacher. So if your teacher has specifically let you know that it is an appropriate time and that that is an appropriate device to be using at that time, those things should be left put away while you are in classes. You are more than welcome to use those items in the hallways, during your lunches, during any time that you are not in a classroom with your teacher where learning should be your main priority. For those of you who are struggling with that just a little bit, there is a new process that you will want to know about. Your teacher is going to give you a warning when your electronic device is out, when it shouldn't be out, and that's your opportunity to realize that you've made a mistake and get it corrected. If you're not able to make that correction for the remainder of the class period and that teacher once again finds that cell phone device out, they are going to bring you one of these lovely envelopes. 
you'll put your device in this envelope. It has a copy of the policy on one side in case you have any questions or need to refer back to the policy itself. On the other side is a place for you to clearly label the information about your cell phone. So your student number, your name, the teacher, the date, so that we can make sure that the correct cell phone gets back to you. Your cell phone will remain in this envelope or whatever other electronic device until it is picked up. Now, the first time you have to hand this device over to that teacher, you'll be able to pick it up from that same teacher at the end of the class period. So you just work with them to find out what the process will be at the end of that class period to get your device back. If there is a second time where you have to place your device into that envelope, that envelope is then going to go to the front office and you'll need to visit the front office at the end of the day in order to pick that device up. Once again, it will be the end of the day. The device will not be released prior to the end of school. The third time that that happens, it's going to require that a parent come and pick up the device. So you want to make sure that you're keeping your devices put away so you're not inconveniencing a parent or guardian who will need to come to the school to pick it up for you. If for some reason you're really struggling with that, we're going to help you out. We're going to help you out by making sure that on that fourth occasion, not only does your parent come in, but we're going to have a quick meeting with parent and an administrator because you need some extra help to put a plan together and make sure that we can help you successfully manage those devices and figure out how to ensure that your learning comes first. So please make sure that you are making learning your top priority in your classes. Please make sure that you're making learning your top priority in your classes and that those electronic devices are put away so that you can focus on what's most important. Right here. If you'll notice, every teacher will have a paper hall pass coordinated with the color zones of the school. And on the back of the hall pass are all the expectations that we have of you students. So the first expectation is that you'll leave your cell phone and other electronics in the classroom. Students, just like Ms. Sylvester said earlier about the electronic devices, this is an expectation. But if you want to use the hall pass, you have to leave some collateral. And that's what it is. Visit only the location indicated and avoid distracting other people in the hallways. If you'll notice, each of the hall passes have a specific bathroom designated. That means that's the bathroom you need to go to. You're not wandering the school. We're going to have every staff member, administrators, trackers, teachers, they're going to notice that if you're in the wrong spot with the wrong color. Have the hall pass visible, which means don't tuck it in your hoodie and just leave it there. Have your hall pass out so that we can see that you're supposed to be in the hallway in the right zone. And the big thing is return to class within 10 minutes. Please do not wander the hallways or go sit on the benches because this is not the time for us to be doing that. It's the time for us to be learning. And return this paper to your teacher when you come back in. Most of the teachers are going to have a bin or something that you can put this hall pass in. Uh, you're not to keep these hall passes. Okay, students, also, when you're asking for hall passes, remember, the teachers have a job to do, and this kind of involves them as well. So, you know, the first couple of minutes of class is not the best idea. Obviously, we're not going to be issuing these during lunches, so don't ask teachers during those times. Just also just be respectful of what your teacher is doing at the moment. Uh, if you can make sure it's a good moment that you can use the hall pass, that's the best thing to do. Now also, these hall passes are going to help us clear out the halls so that we can have a better learning environment here at Granger High. If you have any questions, feel free to come and talk to, to me, Mr. Adams, or any of the assistant principals or Dr. Howe, and we can uh, answer those questions for you. So thank you, Lancers.